part. Bloom, what did you walk into? This species appears to possess shape-shifting abilities, most uncommon for the typical sanguisuge. I dare say, this ability might be blood-dependent, but it's hard to tell based on the limited amount of evidence found. I'm wondering if we're witnessing some sort of accelerated evolution, spurred perhaps by certain unknown environmental factors.
Ooh, let's check this beauty out. Some trace of blue. That's tight. This canyon is protected like some kind of vault. What are they hiding here? Quite a find. Okay. I'll take that.
Christ, that was tough. Starting to lose hope, I'll find two more of these. Research continues, but nothing I've seen explains the unusual capabilities of this curious animal. Judging by the diameter of the tunnels it creates, I estimate it stands at least eight feet tall and is quite powerful. Flying creatures most disturbing. They appear in large numbers, protecting the newly transformed sanguisuges like hornets guarding their hive. It's not clear if that's their only purpose. Perhaps they also gather sustenance and function as scouts. 
Where the heck did it go? Yeah, looks like I'm getting closer to its nest. Gotta squeeze through. Ugh, what a stench. Bloom? Is that you down there? Uh, yes, it, it's me, but who are... Ugh. Whoa, you're Jesse Renier, sir. Splendiferous. Care to explain what happened here, Bloom? Oh, well, I was sitting here, 
to investigate reports of a novel breed of sanguisuge. But when I arrived, I encountered a group of familiars, apparently sent here by their masters. That was a familiar? How come a human turned into that thing so quickly? Well, excellent question, sir. My thesis is that their transformation is linked to the blood from these creatures somehow. The how is what I'm stuck on. Uh, we better take one of those things back with us to the lab. Still beats me what those familiars were doing here. Well, from what I could gather, they were sent on a transport detail, securing a convoy of carts filled with some curious, wriggly little creatures they brought from McCallum sawmill. No, we need to check that place out. Blackwell has always had our backs, and we need to stand up for her. With so many agents lost, they can't afford to lose us, too. I'm sure the others will back me up on this. Amelia is our leader, and that's just that. March 1866, the war between the states might be over, but the larger war, the secret war, continues. Many men still suffering from the toll the war took on their spirits, souls, and bodies find themselves vulnerable to the Sanguizuja's vicious predations. Because of that, we must ramp up our efforts. Our scientific research team has been working on a device that might finally give us an edge in this fight. As part of this effort, I am officially promoting Agent Edgar Gravener to take my place in the field. I, of course, will continue on from the Home Office. Thank you all for your service, and may the good Lord watch over and protect us. Director William Rentier. to in such a hurry. Bar run out of whiskey? Jess, when we dragged your dad in here, there was an awful lot of blood on him. He'll be fine. Bastard's too damn stubborn to die. I've seen my share of battle wounds. The ones William got, no way even half of that came out of him alone. Somewhere between the falling airships and hopping boo hags, I don't know. Could be that collateral damage wasn't the tick's only objective. Could be they... Uh... They infected him? No. No fucking way. Jess, hold your horses and just think about it. The Institute is infiltrated, and they let both you and William walk away? Jess, when a tick turns a familiar, they form a sort of bond. The sire can see into the servant's mind. Now, they make that link with, say... The man who developed that weapon you're carrying. Edgar, our orders are clear when folks get infected. Infected means dead. Those are his own words. Breathe. I've got an idea. Remember that crap I brought from Lake Morapass? That plant that was supposed to be a base for a cure one day. I'm not gonna gamble my father's life on some swamp nerd's magic potion. It's not like we got a handful of aces here, Jess. Tabano and his lunatic spawn had taken the fight to us. And I sure as hell don't want to go to war without our general. Do you? All right. The plant might be back in the manor's ruins. I'll go check if there's anything left of the lab, and you... I go. You need to take care of the gauntlet. I don't give a flying fuck about the gauntlet. I'm not sitting on my ass while my father grows a new set of teeth. And no one asks you to. But if I fail... You and that gauntlet will be the only thing between us and a war we can't win. I got this, okay? 
Just keep an eye on that nosy lady doctor. And stay close to William, just in case I don't make it back in time. That's what worries me. It's not something you can orchestrate overnight. We've been fighting each other for centuries. Like every other creature, they change over time to get an upper hand against us. Until recently, the Sanguisus reproduced by turning their familiars. A slow, but effective process. But now there's this new breed. <sighs> Popping up like rabbits. But they're fierce and resourceful but still not anything we can class as an evolutionary step up the ladder. Well, if anything, they're a step backwards, mindless and bloodthirsty. They're cannon fodder. This is de Bono's idea of an army. Humans turn to minions or whatever foul blood beasts they'll end up being. Foul blood? Precisely, sir, splendiferously observed. Well, I guess to know for sure we have to investigate McCallum's sawmill? McCallum's won't be an easy nut to crack. Without a working gauntlet, we can't penetrate its glamours. Guess it's high time to check up on our resident genius. God, why do I have to be such a pig? Paper, paper everywhere. I can't find shit in here. Oh, hi! Holy moly, where are my notes? As we all know, Faraday's mutual induction phenomenon Virgil, take it easy with the jargon, please. You're talking to a field agent. <sighs> Diamagnetism, polyphase system. Uh, you sure you don't want to hear my radiography joke about... Uh, never mind. Here it is. Long story short, I reverse engineered the disruptor mechanism and identified the problem. Its energy consumption is off the charts. Best engineer in the Institute, huh? Well, before you jump down his throat, perhaps we can give Virgil a chance to explain himself. Miniaturization has its limits. If you want a working disruptor like this, you have to accept the fact that it won't be, well, portable. Like Amelia so kindly pointed out, I'm a field agent. As in, I go out in the field. If the gauntlet's not portable, it's useless. I don't mean to put your ass over the fire, but... Apparently you do. But... If we don't get it running, we're all done for. Can you make it work? Well, maybe if I could somehow get my hands on some spare coils from the original Disruptor... Done. Where can I find them? Got reports about a visual anomaly in a mining town called Baxter. It turned out to be a glamour. Director Rentier sent me there to deliver a crate of heavy electrical coils. They were designed to help our engineers disrupt the illusion. Unfortunately, before the team could collect any relevant data, the cell was destroyed by the ticks. Whatever they were hiding must have been important. They left no one alive. How will I know these coils, Birch? Just look for a miniaturized electrical resonance. Okay, transport. okay, that's not gonna work. Pack your shit, kid. We're out in five. I'll go down first to clear the way. Try not to get killed or Blackwell skin me alive. Right. Roger that, Mr. Jesse. Machinery there. Wonder if I can get it working. 
Dear Alice, I hope you and the children are well. Yesterday, we came across something down in the mines that I can't explain. Imagine a wall of gemstones harder than diamonds. Angus tried to break it apart using dynamite, but it didn't budge. The higher-ups instructed Angus to use a much larger charge, but all that did was cause a cave-in. Many men were lost, Angus and Eastwood among them. Taking it. I'll take it. Any luck with the coils? No. They must have transported them somewhere down those rails. But look what our agents left behind. Huh. I'm going to take it for a test drive. Thanks.
1890 Baxter. With the creation of this new invention, a new era has arrived. This marvel of modern science will empower us in ways we never could have imagined before. Like the invention of the repeating rifle and the Gatling gun, it will revolutionize our ability to wage war against our natural enemies. Indian. What is that a picture of? Down those rails. And how would I do that? There's got to be another way down. Switch. Mr. Jesse, I think I found a shortcut. That's a rusty shortcut, Verge. Well... <sighs> of course it's not working. Luckily, you have a faithful sidekick who can kickstart that thing.
Okay. Oh, that's tight. I'll take that. One down. Now for the other two, and we can open the gate and get down there. Can't anything be simple here? Gotta squeeze through. Second one. Should be it. It worked, Mr. Jesse. I can see that, you know. Now what? That worked. Uh, sir? Are you sure about this? You said down those rails is the best way to go. Uh, maybe the fastest, but the safest? I'm not so sure. You're no fun, Verge.
least I got closer. Mr. Jesse, hey! Are you alright? So there is another way down. But I'm sure yours was more exciting. You gotta see this! With this workstation, you can easily upgrade your tech all by yourself now. Wait, have I just made myself useless? Nah, you're still good for comic relief. I am? Ready to roll, sir? Along with the coils. Let's get them. Finders keepers. Road clear. Go 
glamour we found there leads us to believe that some kind of ancient creature is hibernating down in those mines. Local Indian legends refer to the name of Paisa, but the depiction doesn't hold much resemblance to any sandwich shoes we previously encountered. Seen some coils around here? No? Okay. Yeah. 
there, Verge? I am, as long as that big, ugly, fat thing is dead for good. Jesse? Well done, Birch. Is it safe yet, Mr. Jesse? Well, as long as you can grope your way for the coils here. Well, I'm fine, sir. The dark and messy rooms are kind of my natural habitat. Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Holy moly! What the hell is that thing? Something worth putting up a damn big glamour for, I guess. I've never seen such a peculiar being. Looks like one of those dinosaurs they dug up in a desert. What's in there? This is incredible. According to these studies, it's some kind of pre-Columbian creature. The natives called it the Piazza. Scott's gonna shit bricks when he hears about this. I mean, Agent Bloom is gonna be really interested in this find. He majored in mythological creatures, but seeing it with your own eyes? Splendiferous. That freaky kid's building an army of foul bloods. How did you get roped into all this? Look here. The last entry is from the 12th of May, three years ago. That's probably when the ticks came. This ugly-ass trophy must have been important to her. It's clear she didn't want uninvited guests here. Get the coils, kid. Let's find a place where you can fix the gauntlet, because we need it ready for action. That was suspiciously fast. You sure it works now? Uh, Mr. Renier, sir, we have a situation. I'm kind of in the middle of something. Well, it's... More of an emergency, actually. Some ticks have gotten loose in the basement, and, uh... A what got out of what now? It was an honest mistake. I was taking the liberty to experiment with some ticks we captured, and things got... out of hand. Mr. Jesse, before you go all red and do that... angry maniac thing you do, maybe we could consider it a great opportunity. You make it so hard to like you, Verge. I... You know that, right? Remember that fortuitous gauntlet malfunction that helped you and your father survive? Turns out that that malfunction is a simple override protocol. One you can now control thanks to... Well, me. You're welcome. This better work, or there's gonna be a gauntlet malfunction on your face. I ain't got time to be cleaning up every mess you nerds make. Please don't tell Dr. Blackwell about this. Mr. Renier? Mr. Renier, there's some kind of havoc in the basement. This just came in. It's from Agent Gravener. Good or bad? Private. Oh, uh... Speaking of bad, I found a giant ancient cadaver in Baxter. Any idea why Tix would want to hide it? A few. Why isn't Agent Bloom allowing anyone in to see your father? Security, Doc. Calico's the last working cell in the country, and we mean to keep it that way. That means closing a few doors? Well... So be it. But I'm a medical professional and the head of this cell. So a chain of command shouldn't be an issue for you. It isn't, sir. Amelia, you don't have to get all 
I'd prefer Dr. Blackwell, sir. Ready for debrief whenever suits you best. Oh, there you are. Well, let's skip to the things we're here for, shall we? The creature you found in the Devil's Pass is essentially an oversized leech, a bloodsucker of sorts. Its stomach acids prevent blood from coagulation. So it's like a living container? Precisely. Moreover, according to microscopic analysis, the blood within the leech is remarkably old. It's not only that, it isn't like anything <laughs> we've ever seen. And Felicity feeds it to her familiars. Uh, gotta learn more about that sawmill and how it's all connected. The McCallum Sawmill was founded in 1845 by Elijah McCallum, the definition of a small-town family operation. After Elijah's death two years ago, the mill was bought out by an investor representing the Andalusia Financial Services Group, a conglomerate of banks, oil fields, railways, you name it. What does a big fish like that want with a shitty little sawmill on the ass end of nowhere? It's unclear. The purchase itself was entirely above board. What about the forest? Old native ritual sites, burial mounds, anything? Nothing a note, no. Well, I guess I'll just have to figure this out on my own then. Thanks for your time, Dr. Blackwell. I hope that... I live to serve, sir. I'll get back to my research now. I have a bad feeling about this. Ooh, the zapper's acting up. The glamour must be near. did say something about the source of the glamour. More disgusting than I even imagined. The glamour's probably secured by more of these ugly tumors. I need to take them out to destroy the illusion.
believe there is another ancient beast we can use against our enemies. Its blood is more primitive, purer. Its birth, I believe, dates back to pre-colonial times. This is what connects us all. The source of all power resides in the blood. Bones, blood, and these ugly critters again. Getting weaker now. Probably there's one or maybe two sources more. to take possession of this shithole, but it looks abandoned. This machinery hasn't been used for ages. But something's fishy here. Bet the answer's hidden behind that glamour. children 
You were sick, weak, and poverty-stricken. Dirt poor peasants living simply to survive, bound by pain, clinging to a pointless life. Your only ambition was to pass that suffering onto your young. But now that you have decided to accept my gift, you can leave all that pain and fear behind. I gave meaning to your blood. And blood is everything. Let's check this beauty out. That was the last source. Let's see what you're hiding there. Smell doesn't bode well. Let's take a look, see. Christ is a goddamn blood factory.
She changed every last one of the workers here. These things are alive and pumping blood. Got a bad feeling about its source. Whoa, didn't expect that in the damn jungle. 